right, yesterday, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan announced that he was running for Speaker of the House. And earlier, I sat down with the Congressman to ask why he's running and what agenda he's going to push. Take a look. Joining us now, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, who has announced he is running to be the next Speaker of the House. How are you, sir? I'm Welcome. Rare in studio appearance. Thank you for having me. Um, we're 101 days now outside of the midterm elections. I'm calling it the most important midterm yeah. in our lifetime. Right. They want to impeach the president. If they win, we got to win. Explain. Yeah. Well, if the Democrats get in office, they will go after President Trump because they're, they're, they've went so far left with this socialist, progressive Democrat you know, agenda they have. So this is why it's so critical. And, and here's what's at stake. Think about the last year and a half. Regulations reduced, taxes have been lowered, unemployment at its lowest in 20 years, economy is just humming along, Gorsuch is on the court, Kavanaugh is on deck, the embassy's back, yeah. embassy back in Jerusalem, we're out of the crazy Iran deal, and the hostages have come home from North Korea. And I'm forgetting a few things. By anyone's definition, that is an amazing year and a half. But what's amazing about that list as well is Congress only helped with a little bit of that, the regulation and the taxes. Congress has got to do a better job, and that's why I want to be the next Speaker of the House. we got to focus on doing what we told the American people we were going to do, delivering on health care, delivering on the border security, on immigration, and all middle, those other issues. How did it happen in the middle of the health care debate? We discovered that there were about 100 House Republicans and certainly seven Senate uh, House, sorry, Senate uh, Republicans that had voted to repeal Obamacare in 2015. Same bill. Same bill. And then they changed when it mattered. Six, six Republican senators voted against the exact same legislation they'd supported before. After telling the Americans, after getting elected in 10, after getting elected, taking the Senate in 14, after winning the White House in 16 on that issue, and then not to deliver on that, we haven't delivered on health care reform, repealing Obamacare, haven't delivered on welfare reform, work requirements for able-bodied people, haven't delivered on immigration policy and border security wall, and certainly haven't delivered on holding and controlling spending. That's what we got to do, because that's what we told the American people we were going to do if they gave us the privilege. To serve. Okay, but the president on his own, as you pointed out, has accomplished He's a doing lot. It. And it, w why is there this reluctance among some Republicans? Is it the president is not the conventional establishment figure? Uh, he's iconoclastic, he's bold, he tweets, he says, you know, calls it out fake news. What is it that some Republicans don't like? It's the town. It's Washington. The swamp is the swamp. They don't like someone like Donald Trump coming in there and changing the swamp and changing the way that town works. There's just this reluctance to ever change, even though the American people said in 2010, we're going to put you in charge of Congress to go change things. Even though in 2014, they gave us the Senate to say, go change things. And even though in 2016, they gave us the White House to go change things, there's still this reluctance. And the president feels it every stinking day because mm -hmm. he is he is bound and determined to do what he told the American people he was going to do, what he ran on, the mandate we got from that election, and the House needs to do the same. We've done some good things, but not near enough. The reform that we need to do, like the president's in uh, doing, and, the, and that's by the way, in to fairness happen. to Paul Ryan, the House has been better than the Senate. It sure has. Sure A lot has. better. But let's go through this. Look. So we have 14 states record low unemployment, record low unemployment for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, yep. and women in the workplace. And then take it from there. I mean, we've had nothing but huge, massive economic, great economic news one after the other. You yeah. mentioned the foreign policy successes. And I'm thinking there's a track record to run on. Of course. Let's go campaign on it. And let's also tell the American people, you put us back in power in the, in, in the House of Representatives. We will do what we said. We will help President Trump accomplish what you told us you wanted to accomplish in 2016, what we all ran on. Let's How do you, that. If you become the speaker, and look, I will support you for speaker. It. Because I think the Freedom Caucus has been the most committed to fighting to keep their promises and literally the, the single biggest group fighting to defend the things that are conservative in the country and have helped the president the most. Yeah, we, we talk about when we formed our group three years ago, we talk about the countless number of Americans who feel like Washington has forgotten them and left them behind. We want to go fight for those people, do the things we told them we were going to do. I say this all the time and I say it because I, I believe it. We make the job of being a member of Congress way too complicated. It's pretty simple. What'd you tell the people you're going to do when they gave you the chance to go serve them, their family, their business? What'd you tell them you're going to do? Go do that and be willing to stand up and have the debate. All too often, we forfeit even before the debate even happens, before the referee even blows the whistle. We just say, we're going to forfeit the match. We're going to forfeit the game. Let's have the, let's play the game. Let's wrestle the match. Let's make it happen doing what we told them. How we're will do. you be different? 
That, that, that simple. Here's a great example. The omnibus spending bill. We were so poised to win that debate and hold spending down on non-defense spending. Do what needs to be done for our troops, but hold it down on everything else. Because Chuck Schumer had shut down. the. Remember, he shut the government down on Friday. And over the weekend, the American people said, you are crazy. And so on Monday, he says, Shazam, I'm going to open the government back up because he was losing in the political in the public relations world. So he opens the government back up. A few weeks later, we had a chance on that big spending bill to treat our troops the way they deserve to be treated for defending our country and hold the line on everything else. And what did we do? What the swamp always does. We said, no, nope, we won't even have the debate, even though we got a guy in the White House who was great at debating, great at taking the message to the American people. Even though we had all that, we said, let's just do what we always do. Let's spend more money on everything. And the deficit goes up, the debt goes up and the band plays on in the same old, same old. And swamp the president's wins. literally squeezed because if he wants the money for defense, because we yes, literally because have... we sent him a bad bill. All right, Jim Jordan, good Thank luck. You, We're going to watch this very closely. Uh, do we know when Ryan's leaving? We do not. He said he's going to stay, so and I, I take him at his word. All right. And you want to run for Speaker of the House. Yes. How did you uh, come to this decision? Well, think about it this way. In the, in the last year and a half, under President Trump, Regulations are down, taxes are down, the economy is up, we're going to get great numbers today. Unemployment's at its lowest in 20 years. Gorsuch is on the court, Kavanaugh is on deck. We're out of the crazy Iran deal. The embassy's in Jerusalem and the hostages have come back from North Korea. An amazing year and, and a half. It remains coming back today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I'm forgetting some other good things. So that's an amazing, by anyone's definition, that's an amazing year and a half. But think about Congress. What has Congress done? We've certainly helped with the taxes. But all those other things that we told the American people we would accomplish. Repeal and we replace. Have a, repeal Obamacare, reform welfare, build the border security wall, and, and fix our immigration system and control spending. We haven't done that. So I think this is real simple. I, I, I always say this. We make the job of being a member of Congress way too difficult. It's really basic. What did you tell the voters you were going to do? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. And we haven't done enough of that. We need to do more of that and help President Trump make America great again and do the things that we said. Well, let's talk about some things in the news this past week. Uh, Eleven members of the House Freedom Caucus uh, signed articles of impeachment. Yep. Uh, went into the House uh, yesterday. They, they pretty much decided, you know what, we're not going to go forward with that. I understand, apparently, behind the scenes, the Department of Justice, when they got that squeeze, suddenly said, you know what, we are going to produce more documents, which is what you wanted to do in the first place. Exactly. But why did you uh, you all take that tack? We, we all we've done is file it, so uh, it's still there. It, okay. it's, it's, to the, it's sent to the Judiciary Committee. It can be brought up at any time. Uh, the only way we've gotten documents and information that we're entitled to get, so the American people can get, can get answers, is when we put the pressure on them. It's always still so It's always worked. Of course it worked. I mean, we, we have caught Rod, we, we sent letters back in November for information they didn't comply with, two subpoenas they haven't complied with. We've caught the Justice Department trying to hide information from us, namely when they redacted the portion of the text message where it showed Peter Strzok was friends with one of the FISA court judges mm -hmm. who happened to be the same federal judge who heard Mike Flynn's case. And we know Rod Rosen, Fox News reported this, Catherine Herridge and, and Greg Jarrett, we know Rod Rosenstein threatened staff members on the House Intelligence Committee when they were trying to do their job to get answers. So that's the history. We have to continue to push or we're not going to get the information. Why does the Intelligence Committee, the Investigative Committee on the Senate side, uh, say that we didn't need to impeach Rod Rosenstein? They didn't have the same uh, push that you did to get all these documents. You, you, Why is that? Have you talked to the Senate you'd have, side? You'd have to ask them. All, all I know is two days ago we had a meeting with the Department of Justice folks, Dana Bonte, FBI counsel. Uh, said at the start of the meeting, because well, the first question from Mr. Goodlatte was, why wouldn't Peter Strzok answer some of our questions in that hearing? And Mr. Bonte said, well, he should have answered about 90 percent of the questions Congressman Jordan had in that in that hearing. And I'm like, well, great, we know that now. It would have been nice to get the answers in the hearing when we were asking those questions. So, so the FBI told him not to answer that? And yes. That was a lie that Peter Strzok? They told him not to answer at that time, and now they're saying, you know what, he should have answered some of those questions, 90 percent of the ones that I asked him. So that's a problem. That's been the pattern. And, and there's, there's a point where the frustration gets so high, not just for us, more importantly for the American people, that you have to use every means that you have at your disposal to get the information, including contempt, including impeachment, we, if we need you to You knew there. when you sent this letter there was going to be criticism from the left. Nancy Pelosi's come out saying you're trying to impeach because, Rod Rosenstein, because there's some controversy that you've been involved in, she says. She says you're doing this to divert attention from the entanglements in the sexual abuse investigation swirling around yeah. Ohio State University's wrestling program. Explain what happened when you were the assistant coach there. Yeah. The, this uh, look, I've talked to all kinds of my colleagues. They can all see through this story. This is something that that supposedly happened 30 years ago. If there, in fact, was abuse, then we want people to get justice and, and the truth to come out. But there were hundreds of coaches, uh, hundreds of administrators in that time period. No one ever reported any. Certainly no one reported it to me if they had. 
I would, there, there was no reason for you not to deal with it if you knew about it. You're, you're student athletes. You want the best for them. Sure. You want them ready to compete and be able to win. So if there was some problem, I would have definitely reported. There was a reported. doctor on the team, a doctor that was um, supervising all of the like wrestlers. Like four, 14 different, 14 different uh, was Division One. Congressman, teams why, and he killed himself. why did your name yeah. come up now? Well, I mean, come on. It's like the, the, who's, uh, you know, you're one of the assistant coaches, and, and you're, you're probably, uh, I guess, the most high-profile individual uh, today. So it draws attention to what they're trying to do. The guy who's making the most noise is a guy who's got a criminal background. The other guy has been in prison for 18 months. Why are they trying to, You're saying they're trying to hurt you? Well, I mean, look, you, you have to ask them. What I, what I know is every single assistant coach has said the same thing I have. Uh, all kinds of wrestlers have come forward and said the same thing I have. And the reason they've done that, the reason they've said that is because it's the truth. Right. And uh, all my colleagues see through this story, so uh, we're focused on doing what we told the American people we're going to do and making Congress work so we can continue to help the president accomplish good things. We don't know a lot what Robert Mueller is doing, and they don't get that many leaks out, but one came out yesterday that the Mueller group is looking into the president's uh, tweets oh, and wow. how it might coincide with some of the president's um, uh, interviews with uh, Comey and company and how it might uh, maybe look like collusion yeah. Yeah. or coercion. Well, they're looking into everything, but one thing they're not finding is any type of coordination, any type of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia, which is... Uh, does it show they're getting closer or does it show they're desperate? Who knows? Who knows? What we know is this whole thing started with a dossier that was not credible that we found out in the Strzok hearing just a couple weeks ago. This is the first time that the FBI admitted this, that they were getting parts of the dossier from Bruce Orr, top official at the Justice Department, mm -hmm. who, oh, by the way, his wife worked for Fusion, who was being paid by the Clinton campaign. Mm -hmm. Now, you cannot, that, that is what is so bad about this. The fact that a top-ranking justice official whose wife is working for the Democrat paid opposition research firm is giving information to the FBI, and that becomes the basis that you take to the FISA court to start this whole affair. Mm -hmm. And you, when you go to the court, you don't tell the court who paid for it, and you don't tell the court that the guy who wrote the darn thing, Christopher Steele, was out leaking information to the press. That is as wrong as it gets, and yet now we're looking at tweets the president did, and somehow that's a problem. This is crazy. Right. i got to ask you something about being speaker. We know you're, the Freedom Caucus is very conservative, but if you're going to be a successful speaker, mm -hmm. you have to get people in your own party, maybe even, dare I say, the other party, who don't necessarily have the same doctrine and belief as you. They might be the so-called moderates of the Tuesday group. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? I think you look at process. I mean, right now, there's just a handful of people at the top who make all the decisions. And that's not fair to the 435 members of the Congress, not fair to the 240 members of the Republican Conference. We all represent three quarters of a million people. And when you've got a couple people at the top making all the decisions, and they're basically telling other members, just wait your turn. Maybe someday we'll let you. You keep voting with us. Keep raising money for us. And maybe someday we'll let you be subcommittee chair of some committee. That is not how the place is supposed to work. There are members from all across this country, this diverse great nation of ours, who want to weigh in and represent the families and the people back home that they get the privilege of serving. Well, let's let them get in. For example, nine committee chairmanships open up next year. Nine committee chair. I don't think a few people at the top should decide who chairs those committees. Why not let the people on the committee who have the expertise, the talent, and the experience to say, this is the person who is best enabled, best, best capable of leading this committee to get accomplished the policies that we all campaigned on, that we all told the American people we would do. Are you still getting shadow banned, by the way? We were there a couple days ago. I think they fixed it. But it's interesting. Matt Gates, Mark Meadows, Devin Nunes, Jim Jordan. Hmm. How does the algorithm, Steve, how does the algorithm just, oh, did, no, did, did they put those four, four names in the algorithm? I mean, this is, this is crazy, but it's happening, and Mr. Gates is fired up about it, and so are the rest of us. So we're losing faith in the network television, and we're losing faith in social media. Yeah, but not Fox News. At the same News. time. <laughs> I don't think so. But not Fox News. All right, News. he would like to be the next Speaker of the House. He's Jim Jordan from the great state of Ohio. Sir, thank you very much. Thank great you. to see you.